a good afternoon, a good morning, a good evening. This is Chris Petrie. Welcome. Everyone, we're going to have some uh, enjoyable uh, fun today. We're going to actually do a lighthouse. Um, this is the photograph we're going to work from. Uh, you probably, uh, you know that I frequently I use uh, photographs for, for uh, my reference material. And um, a lot of the, uh, most of the, most of the time the reason is I'm in the studio a lot. I work on a full-time job during the week and then usually on the weekends or at nights if I'm working I'm just trying to do some quick you know maybe an hour of um, practice and, and painting and I just don't have the uh, time to go out all the time and and do uh, you know work in plain air but uh, working outdoors is great too if you can do it and have the time uh, I think it's a fantastic thing I, I know a lot of artists like to paint outdoors so um, if I have a chance you know I'm gonna get out to some coastal areas I've done that in the past many times gone out to local areas where I live coastal areas you know uh, painting boats and drawing and, and things like that or in my local area drawing buildings and local s streetscapes and things like that so I do go out and paint and draw in um, you know uh, outdoors uh, in my local area where I live or if I'm on vacation or traveling to families houses and things like that I I definitely try to do it as much as I can but a lot of times it's just quick to be in the studio and just you know do some quick drawing and practicing and painting so Again, we're going to do a lighthouse. This is the photograph we're going to use. And the main uh, thing I'm going to stress here is let's try to simplify this photograph. There's so many things going on in this. Um, just aesthetically, there's just, you know, um, a tremendous amount of cloud structure, uh, cloud formations in the sky. There's all kinds of background um, in the uh, distant uh, hills here across the way. There's a beach, there's some hills, there's a building. There's houses, there's all kinds of... So we're going to try to take all this information and just kind of simplify it a little more so that we don't get bogged down with too many um, details that are going to uh, slow us down and cause us to lose track of the vision of what we want to accomplish here. So the main thing we want to accomplish is a nice beautiful lighthouse here. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to, since it's in the, um, it's our main focal point, we're going to want to have this, um, you know, this, pr this is going to have the most detail. Then as we go into the middle distance and the further distance and the clouds and so forth we're just going to do real not much detail there so as you can see you'll you see this picture here this photograph and then <clears throat> I'll set this up across from me I'll tape it up on my uh, my uh, wall over here in my studio just about a foot or two across from me and we'll start we'll do a contour drawing first and then we'll begin and we'll we'll follow right through with our painting so I'm going to try to keep the colors the same and uh, other than that, again, my main focus here that I'm thinking about when I'm doing this is how can I simplify this? How can I make this simple? And also, uh, an automatic way to simplify is a painting is to limit yourself to how much time you have to work on it. So let's say you, you say to yourself, I'm going to give myself a half an hour to draw this, and then I'm going to give myself an hour to paint it. So right there, if you kind of set your time limit on how much time you're going to focus or work on your painting and drawing you'll actually be forced to um, simplify it because if you said to yourself well I'll do this for like two days I'll work on this two days on the weekend and I'll have like four hours each day to work on it that might mean that you'll spend all that time trying to get in all these smaller details which might actually kind of throw you off your game plan of trying to simplify so if you want to simplify your paintings, it's a real simple kind of like um, a format It's just or technique, and it's just basically limiting your time, saying to yourself, I'm only going to take an hour to do this, this painting, everything, or a half an hour, whatever it is you might want to set for yourself for your time limit. You can do that. You can say, I'm only going to give myself one half an hour to draw and paint this, or one hour, or two hours. If it's a larger painting, you might need a little more time. If you're doing a smaller, this is going to be a approximately a five by seven size painting so five by seven is a little easier to get done quicker the larger your painting it might take a little more time uh, it depends though how you paint in any case let's get started I'll tape this up across from me and I will start and again my goal here is to simplify this scene to get the main feel of it and not get uh, bogged down in 
superficial details that are just going to take away from the beauty of the natural scene that we that we see in the photograph. Okay, so I'm going to get a pencil. This was this is going to be a, a nine, a number nine pencil, and I have rough uh, paper here. This is uh, Arches uh, rough paper, and I'll do a border. So I'm going to make sure I'm. I want to make sure I'm in the scene, uh, in the picture here, picture frame. Okay, we have our border. Okay, now we're going to do a light preliminary sketch, just to sort of. This is the rock formation about halfway on the paper, about half halfway across the paper is the rocks um, underneath the, um, the lighthouse, the foundation. So just a light preliminary sketch here to get the, the feel of where everything is going to go. And we have Okay, so this is the top of the lighthouse. And that's the cone at the top of the lighthouse. And we have uh, a wall, a bit of a wall over here, and then another. It's like a dormer over here. So I'm trying to be, you know, light preliminary sketch. And sometimes if we do a light preliminary sketch, we might realize that we can use this for our finished uh, pencil drawing instead of going over it a second time. If you feel like you have captured everything really well, then you can just, uh, your light preliminary sketch, you can just use that instead of going over it a second time if, if you feel it's, um, you have all the information you need uh, there. And I think I'm going to do that. couple arched windows there, a large square window here. Okay, architecturally, okay, I noticed that I This window here is a little bit lower, so no big deal. A little bit of an eraser. And that window starts about at the eaves of the, the roof there. So I want to keep this pretty accurate to the to the um, to the photograph and the actual location here. And The water is about here in the distance, and that shoreline goes all the way straight across the picture. And then we have a shoreline, so we can kind of leave ourselves a little area of white paper for the shoreline. And then we have the um, middle distant and distant hills. There's some buildings over here.
Okay, so I, I did some really light sketching uh, for the distant hills. And um, there's also a looks like a dock over here close to the um, lighthouse and then there's a small um, small walkway walk bridge going up okay the, the fun part is getting near we're gonna start painting soon um, so here I'm going to try to sketch the rocks a little bit to kind of get the feel for the rocks. This way we... Sketching the rocks here would be important. Again, if we look at the photograph, we can see that we this is a good place to kind of capture some details so we can kind of have like those sharp pointy um, rock shapes those sharp edges, like those square edges here and there. So we want to capture that with our painting. And then we'd like to capture this too, these large uh, concrete, uh, this foundation for the lighthouse that sits atop the, the rock formation here. So to do this we... Here we know this is a, a lighthouse and a structure and it's you know, like a, like a house, like a building, a lighthouse. We know the, this is like, doesn't need to be explained much. It just, the shape of it itself, the outline of it, we know what it is right away. Whereas we should know what these things are too, the rocks and the foundation for this lighthouse. But th that type of thing with rocks and this foundation, it's a little more, um, if, if someone happens to look at the painting and they're not familiar with the shoreline or the coastal areas too much, we can we can kind of make a little more details in this area to kind of explain what these things are. So that's why I'm going to take a little bit of more a little more time to um, create some details here. And again, making some of these rock formations, we can uh, fill in with pencil a little bit. Some of these rocks are uh, in, in shadow. in the foreground here, so I'm going to um, make sure I shadow some of these areas. Over here it's a little bit lighter shadow, so the tonal value is lighter over here, but over here it's darker. Alright, that, that looks good. This is pretty, uh, no, you notice that I kind of did the shading a little bit with the pencil, just to kind of, so that when I go in and paint, and I'm, because when we're in the painting mode, then we're kind of in a different mode from drawing, and we're sort of fo focused on our colors, what colors are we using, 
um, how much, how light, how dark is the colors we're using, how much paint, how much water. So when we're painting, there's a lot of stuff going on. So if we can do this, uh, you know, this preliminary shading in areas where we need it, where it's going to help us a lot, then, then let's do that. Because that will really help a lot if you kind of shade, pre-shade areas that um, might be a little more difficult once you're painting. Just to give you like a little rough guide of where you're going to add some darks, where the, where the dark uh, shading is. When you're doing water, that's pretty much we kind of were familiar with doing water a lot. But some of these rock formations might be a little challenging, so that's why I did this here. And the same thing here. Um, I'll work from my photograph though and concentrate on that. All right, so this is pretty good. We'll we'll start painting. Again, we always use our same method. We have a bucket. We put some fresh water in it. Try to change your water as much as you can every 20 minutes or so or half an hour. Um, maybe we'll work with a couple couple uh, smaller brushes. Nothing. Uh, this is a smaller 5x7 format painting, so we'll just use a couple uh, Kalinsky Sable round brushes. Good points. And I'll start in with the darks here. So I'll go with some French Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Umber. And that's uh, some uh, Raw Umber. Some more blue. And I'll just try to go in and get some of the darks. I'll start with the darkest darks. And I'm trying to capture those sharp angles and points. Seems a little warmer. I'll go with some more uh, red. Some burnt sienna. And some, maybe some cad red too here. Try to warm this up. This looks like a, a warmer scene here. It looks like a lot of sunlight in this picture. So that can be some. Darker uh, and warmer colors. See uh, quite a bit of uh, some yellow ochre. I see here some orange. Some cadmium red. So I see a lot of red and orange here. Some uh, yellow ochre I see. Here, here we don't have to get two. Um, you can spend as much time as you like, like doing the rocks in this section here. I think it's...
since we're going to have a red lighthouse above we're going to just make this some in the water we'll just add that and we make sure to add some blue to that red because it is we're going to make the water predominantly blue and you can see I'm, I'm just slightly adding some adding some water in color blue the blue cobalt blue and cerulean blue and then some of these uh, tops of these rocks are like a lighter yellow you can let things dry sometimes if you want to <clears throat> then we have some more uh, some grayer color so I mix a little bit of um, cerulean blue with um, the um, brown burnt umber and French ultramarine to get it kind of a And then I would try to vary it a little. And I'm going to try to paint the blocks. This will kind of... So I'm going to vary the color. And we'll just paint these blocks square. And I add a little bit of red in there, just to, I'm looking at the photograph and trying to copy what I see pretty much, but also giving myself freedom not to, be too exact. And then we have the blue for the water, so I'll use French Ultramarine. Cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of iridium green. Now we can start with, um, we'll do some uh, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, and we'll try to get a, and a little bit of burnt umber. We'll try to get a, a nice mixture of reds. I'm going to try to pencil in a few figures. I'm 
just so I remember to to do that and The windows are really dark in the photograph, so I'm not too worried that I'm kind of going over the windows a little bit. There's some strong shadowing underneath the... Um, underneath the lighthouse, so I'll do that once this dries, this and I'm going to mix some Try to mix some black with some uh, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of lizard and crimson, maybe a little bit of green. The uh, underside of this cone is uh, is darker. Okay, and I see a couple. I'll do some more final details. Here and there, once uh, some shadows. So now that this is pretty much roughed in, this uh, the um, the rock formations and the and the stone wall, concrete wall. I'm going to start working on the water. I'll move to my larger brush. And I'll just go in and use the same color mixes I used before. French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of radiant green. get the feel for water. I like to leave some white white paper here and there. A little bit of splashing. 